JMeter is the default executor type used by Taurus if none is specified. If there is no JMeter installed at the configuration path uh, by default or as selected or configured, Taurus will attempt to install the latest JMeter and plugins into the location defined. By default, uh, the Taurus looks for JMeter uh, inside the BZT JMeter Taurus bin JMeter folder. And if it cannot find it here, it will download and install the JMeter and run your script. You can, though, change this default location of the JMeter path. The plugin options lets you describe the list of JMeter plugins you would want to use. If JMeter option isn't found, only following plugins will be installed. The list is given to you on the screen. Uh, please note that you can change plugin list uh, for a clean installation if you would like to. And if you already have JMeter placed at the path, you need to remove it for the plugin installation to go through. So here is an example that details all that we learned in the last slide. So you can see here that we are overriding uh, or rather using the default JMeter path here, but you can give a different path if you would like to. We also have the download link just in case the JMeter is not available on this path for Taurus to use. Taurus will use this download link to download the JMeter. We also can specify the specific version of JMeter you want to download. And if you do not specify anything, then the latest version of JMeter will get downloaded. You can also specify the plugins that should get installed under the plugins uh, uh, element. And further, you can uh, also build a YAML, which will have a scenario. And a scenario may then have configuration attached to it in a JMX script to run. If you do not want to give any additional configurations, then you can run a simple JMX file directly from the BZT command by passing the JMX file name to it. Your JMeter properties can be set either globally at the module level or locally at the scenario level. Uh, the scenario properties are eventually merged into global properties and the resulting set comes as an input for JMeter. You can also specify specific system properties for JMeter in the system properties section. They will come as system properties files in the artifacts. Let's take a look at an example. So if you would like to set some JMeter properties at the global level, then you can set it at the module level for JMeter. So for example, in the first uh, example on the left side, you're setting the host name, the log level, the log level for threads and the system property for JMeter at a global level. If you wanted to set it at a scenario level, then you will define these properties uh, within the scenario element. So if you see the example on the right hand side, it has scenarios. And within the scenario, you have set properties like host name or log level of the JMeter. Now, when you want to verify or debug the JMX file that uh, generated from your request scenario, you do not need to search for that file on the disk. You can simply enable the GUI mode by adding GUI to the command line. Instead of running the scenario, Taurus will perform all the other steps and then launch the resulting JMeter JMX file for you to view. You can simply enable the GUI mode for the JMeter module, as in the first example, by setting the GUI to true. Uh, the JMeter executor also allows you to apply modifications to the JMX file before running the JMeter. And this is going to affect both the existing JMX files and uh, those generated from the request. You specify the script as a scenario. However, you can still use Taurus script to override the existing properties, for example, concurrency, ramp up value, uh, or even your hold for time. You can also add JMeter variables or disable some of the elements that already exist in the JMeter script or add specific values to a JMeter HTTP sampler, for example. 
this is usually a very popular use case if you would wish to continue using your JMeter scripts as is. However, before wrapping them up into Taurus, you would wish to modify some of the properties. Um, you can do this using the Taurus executor. Now, the base element for a request in a Taurus script uh, is an HTTP request. In its simplest form, it contains just the URL as a string. Uh, otherwise, it could have elements like the HTTP method, a label, a body, body parameter, uh, or the upload file section, or even define the headers uh, section, which will create a header manager in the JMX script. Now, Let's talk a little bit about how Taurus works with extractors. Um, extractors are objects that are attached to a request to take a piece of response and use it uh, in the subsequent request. The concept is based on JMeter's extractors. Taurus can use different types of extractors. It can um, support extractors by regular expression, uh, by JSON path expression, by CSS or jQuery selectors or even by XPath query. You have a couple of examples on the screen. We also support uh, JMeter assertions in Taurus. So assertions are attached to a request element and are used to set the fail status on the response. Uh, fail status for the response is not the same as the response code for JMeter. Uh, for now, we support three types of response assertions, checking HTTP response fields, validation of JSON response against JSON path expression, and XPath query to validate the XML response. If you see the example on the screen, I'm running a request to the Blaze demo URL, and I can assert for the presence of uh, the APP expression this is a regular expression as identified by the regexp uh, set to true. And uh, the other settings available for uh, JMeter assertions are also available in Taurus. For example, assume success. And by default, the subject within which this assertion needs to be searched is defined as the body of your response. We also have support to control the execution flow in Taurus by using uh, the following constructs. So we have support for if block, which allows conditional execution of the HTTP request. The if block must contain a mandatory then field and an optional else field. We do support loop blocks, which allow repeated execution of the request. And the nested requests are specified with the do field. We also support the while block, which is similar to while loops in many programming languages. And it allows conditional repeated executions of the requests. The while blocks are compiled to JMeter's while controllers. The for each blocks allow you to iterate over a collection of values and are compiled uh, to the JMeter for each controllers. The transaction blocks allow wrapping HTTP requests in a transaction, and they correspond to JMeter's transaction controllers. The include scenario block allows you to include a scenario in another one. You can use it to split your test plan into a few independent scenarios that can be reused. And the action block allows you to specify a thread-specific action that will be performed. You can use it to pause or stop the current thread or force it to go to the next loop iteration. 